it, it looks better. Hi, everyone. We're live. I'm Jim Provenzano, the Arts and Nightlife Editor for the Bay Area Reporter. And I have on screen now, I have nine former and current folks with the Bay Area Reporter with more to come. Um, we're talking about, this is our 12th and final Bay Area Reporter Bar Talks online panel. We've done multiple topics throughout the year. This is kind of a greatest hits. I've uh, researched and dug up some former writers and editors who I, I'm glad are still with us. We have uh, Christopher Culwell, former arts editor for the Bay Area Reporter, Liz Heileman, science and health writer, Cynthia Laird, current news writer, news editor, and former assistant news editor. Is that right, Cynthia? Yep. yep. We have Tom Horn, publisher emeritus, and also former legal counsel for the paper as well. Right, Tom? Right. right. And Michael Yamashita, our current publisher, who rose through the ranks from a listings editor to an assistant accountant. What did you do next after I filled in for that, Michael? General manager. General manager, and then eventually publisher. And Adriana Roberts, internationally famed mashup DJ, actually worked at the newspaper where she whipped out the entire section in a matter of minutes, <laughs> revamped it and renovated the look of the whole paper in the mid nineties. Um, to your, to our, uh, the viewers, right, is Cornelius Washington, arts and erotica writer, if I may. Is that appropriate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I look erotic? If, if, you, if you want more of, of he and, and me and John Carr, who who's logged off, but I'll try to dredge him back up. We did a whole panel about the sexy aspects of the paper, including the um, porn actor reviews and other things from the old days, escort ads that kept us alive before the internet. And Paul Parrish, dance reviewer for how long, Paul? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Chris, when did I start? Uh, well, I think you wrote a paragraph once in 1993 or 94. <laughs> Actually, my first was uh, the obituary for Keith White. Oh, okay. Um, well, that was, I think that was, I think that was uh, around uh, 1991 or 92. Care about, yeah, that'd be 91. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Mark Norby or Mark William Norby, is that your that's your pen name, right? That's my pen name, yeah, for my fiction and nonfiction. Oh, okay. And and you wrote for the paper for the nineties to wait. Uh wait. late nineties, uh, as assistant editor next to Cynthia Laird, and I cover news, nightclubs, crime, health, arts and culture. <laughs> what didn't you cover it would be easier. <laughs> and now you have a you have a pension for nice uh, poetry write ups as we had last week, right? Thank you, thank you. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is, before we get to the wonderful retro covers of the BAR through the years, we're gonna go chronologically. I just wanna ask everyone, um, and I hope Carr comes back, if we can get him in. Will Snyder was still having some problems logging in. Um, Tom, can you tell us about the early days and when you started, when you got to know Bob Ross, the co-publisher of the paper from the 1971 or earlier? No, I met Bob in 1981. Oh, okay. Um, when uh, when Mayor Feinstein put me on the Board of Trustees of the War Memorial and I became one of just a handful of gay city commissioners in town and I felt like I needed to know the publisher of the gay paper. So I reached out to Bob and uh, we had lunch uh, and, and just became good friends. Um, he, he and I shared interests in the arts, in opera and in, uh, in dance particularly. We traveled a lot together. Uh, he had a lawyer for the for the paper at the time, Duke uh, Duke Armstrong, mm -hmm. who passed away of AIDS in the mid to late '80s, and then I became uh, general counsel, and my firm became general counsel for the paper. And then uh, when Bob passed in uh, 2003, then uh, uh, I became I became publisher for 10 years. And a, a proud decade of service it was. We did a lot of transitions during that time, didn't we? Um, we went from the Harrison Street and 9th Street offices next door to the stud to briefly downtown with three or four other newspapers, some which don't exist anymore, and then we moved. Then you you finished before we moved to, you were already publisher, Mike, by the time we moved to Golf Street here, right? Yeah, I think so. That was 2017-ish. Yeah. 2014. Yeah, we were downtown for 2013, most of it, and then we moved here. So it's been a while. 
So, Michael, when did you start? How did you start up with the newspaper? Because I owe you my career with the BAR. <laughs> you tell yours first. It was a freak accident. I, I just applied. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my first um, job out of college, actually. And um, I was applying to all the publications. And, you know, when we used to have uh, national magazines, used to have offices here in downtown. And um, so I applied to a bunch of them. And I had, because I had an English degree and that was kind of something that I thought I could deal with for a little while and do some editing and maybe some writing. And, but the um, BAR was the first one to give me uh, an interview and Bob gave me a chance. And, and so did um, the news editor at the time, Ray O'Loughlin. He was between, I think he, he was, uh, Brian Jones was a longtime editor who, who um, prof he, was, he had a journalism degree, so he professionalized the news uh, reporting. Uh, he died of AIDS, unfortunately, and Ray was um, an assistant editor who was, uh, was a uh, news editor at the time for maybe like a year or two years, and then he went back to grad school. So um, I owe them giving me a break. And so, um, so I did, I was working in the editorial department for two years doing like, uh, the listings and, and, uh, a little bit of fact checking, but mostly editing the galleys, right. When we had the, all that type out of the, um, I even forget what you call that machine, um, typeset <laughs> machine, right. And everything was put up on, by wax. So, uh, um, then in 90, that was 89 and 95. Our business manager, um, Tony Lindsay, died of a diabetic heart attack um, all of a sudden. And a few days later, Bob asked me if I would be interested in writing the paper and he would teach me. And I thought, well, who the hell is going to give me or give me a chance like this again? Right. So I thought, well, and by that time you had come back from Italy or you, you, so whatever, we were all in transition, but that was another break that I never, you know, I didn't, I didn't know I was going to enjoy the business side of the, of, uh, the paper as much as I did. Yeah. You've never had another job. This has been your entire <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's so it's frightening. I hate to admit it because people look like I look at me like I have two heads. And that but... is unheard of. I mean, congratulations. I mean, obviously you like it, but wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is pretty amazing. Now I owe Michael my job because I had just spent a year on unemployment after the, the ruckus that was Outweek magazine. And having that at the top of your resume wasn't very helpful in getting jobs in New York City after it died. And I came out to visit for a frontier story about the Lavender Tortoise uh, tour to, to Reno. And I met Mark Geller and I was working for Frontiers and freelancing for actually the Sentinel and not the BAR um, and the Advocate. And I went to the BAR with my resume and the, you know, the Guardian said, oh, we have intern positions. And then I said, oh, I have three cover stories with the Advocate. So thanks. Um, and I came to the BAR and Michael was just leaving for a month or two to Italy. So I replaced him. And when I came back, he moved up to general, to working, doing a different job, a more important job. And I started doing the listings and obituaries and an occasional news story. So I fit in thanks to Italy. We pray to St. Sebastian <laughs> and the other icons that Mike likes. Um, Christopher, you were the arts editor when I, in 92, I think in June, when I started with Mike Salinas was about the same time, right? Around that time. Yes. Yes. And when did you start with the paper? I can't remember exactly when it was so long ago, but it was sometime in 92 after I, after I left the scent from hell <laughs> was the most hated gay lesbian newspaper in San Francisco. We used, we used those terms back then, gay lesbian newspaper in San Francisco. Because more, more, so, more so than uh, than Ray Brochure's Crusader? I don't know which, what that is. <laughs> <laughs> A oh, short lived bit of history we can find at the GOBT. That was really insipid. Really? Was it just one guy? Was it like a zine, Tom? Nobody, nobody here knew Ray Brochures. Ray Brochures, yes, but I, I can spell it. Don't you know, know it. Know yes. H e u r s. I guess he was yeah. he was a self proclaimed minister, 
and he ministered to the street boys, you know, the boys that were on the street in, in, in lots of different ways. He ministered mm. and, uh, and he, 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 surprise, had, surprise. he had this publication called uh, the crusader and he was setting out to, to find evil, particularly in the gay community. Wow. Everybody was scared to death of him because he he would he would trash people uh, in the paper and and because he ran a soup kitchen on Sixth Street, the politicians kind of paid attention to him. Um, and then one day he died of a massive heart attack, and no one was too sad about that. But that had to be back in the seventies. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, well, there were lots of early 80s. No, there was he a, figures in Jose Saria's biography. They were running rival soup kitchens. Yes, that sounds right. But Jose had real silver for the homeless people to eat their breakfast from. And, and I don't think Brochier's did. Wow. Well, we don't have photos of that, but um, but there were, they, I remember at one time there were five or six gay, they were called gay and lesbian, not LGBT at the time. There was the BAR, the Sentinel, Frontiers, San Francisco, and then there was Spectrum and Gloss, which you, if you count as, it's Bay a public. Time. You, and Bay Times. And, and the Bay, Bay Times. Times. Oh, yeah. And the Bay Times. All Bay Times. For a long time, the Bay Times was the one that everybody who was kind of like young and cool and upcoming and on and kind of edgy and who was kind of like pushing the edges of the vocabulary of queerness as we knew it at that time, they all wanted to be with the Bay Times and they perceived the BAR and the Sent from Hell as being the white, the white fag rags. It was a very politicized time. Yeah, yeah I didn't was understand. It coming up? Coming up, that's its older 80s version, yeah. Yeah. When it was square shaped, it was very large format, like Frontiers, and it was mostly listings. That's what their roots were. Um, but yeah, let's not talk about them. Let's talk about us. Adriana, you, you revamped the paper in the mid nineties and we'll get to that with the visuals soon. Um, tell me how that was and what, what you came with, what you brought with you. Well, from um, I mean, Chris Caldwell is the one who brought me into the BAR because I worked with him at the <laughs> now to forever be known as the sent from hell, <laughs> the San Francisco Sentinel. You left in 93, Chris, because I remember I was just like, Oh, was it 93? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was 93. Because because when you left, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be here very much longer. And by then, I was already writing. I was writing. I was a music journalist. I started off right, right, doing doing that for the Bay Area Reporter. Um, and then uh, in 95, you had some sort of tiff with the art director at the time. And you somehow um, convinced Bob Ross to bring in me just to do your own section so you would have your own personal art director for the arts and <laughs> entertainment section. And little did I know that it was actually all just part of a ploy to oust my predecessor and plug me in. And I was... I, I had no intention of working for a gay and lesbian newspaper ever again, but it was, it was fabulous actually. <laughs> and you um, made your sights on other things. <laughs> I did, but uh, you know, that it took a while, but um, so yeah, I worked at the BAR for 13 years and like, yeah, in my fir very first year in 90, it was pride 96. Mm -hmm. I was like, we need to bring this paper kicking and screaming into this decade because it had a visual yeah. <laughs> style that just looked straight out of the 70s because it had never been redesigned like since the 70s i don't think um the um, 80s mid 80s there was mid the 80s oh my god the mid, yeah. I was in mid 80s it was such a dated look then i mean yeah, it was very 80s I, I, say that, I say this now but of course i look at these old covers and i was like Ooh, it was so dated 90s, but, you know, not all design holds up. But anyway, um, but yeah, I uh, re redesigned the logo, redesigned the entire, streamlined the entire process, and I whittled a four-day job down into two and a half days. Yeah, yeah, like, you did that. That's a job. <laughs> you did do that. say that, that uh, Adriana, your, your, your image behind you, your, your curtain uh, screen saver. This, this is actually office. my, this is my old office. This is... That's that's my old my old iMac my ginormous uh, <laughs> iMac with you know big CRT monitors you know pre pre flat screen you know uh, this was my my uh, yeah it was the 
the production office. It also was my dressing room and my rehearsal space for when I would do shows downstairs at the stud. The stud, yeah. <laughs> and we would come in on like after T Shack on Wednesday morning, and there'd be like a giant spaceship, or, or you know, <laughs> glitter on the carpet. Oh my god. <laughs> Because the back production room was actually Tom or Mike, you can confirm, was a garage at first, or did it become the production room later on the Harrison Street office? The downstairs. That was that that was a, a former motel. Okay. Oh, right, yeah. the trucker motel. Right. That's yeah. right. It was a motel. That's right. It was a motel. And Mark, you have stories about when there was an art. It was after the motel. It was turned into a. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, what was it called? I should have looked it up today. Um, it was called the Art the Art Motel. It was a nightclub called the Art Motel, and that was while I was an undergraduate at USF. And um, so one would come into the club just like you do into the stud, and the bar was there, and the dance floor was there, and everything. But upstairs was a very creepy art gallery. So each of the offices was made into an an installation room and uh yeah it was it, it was something to be seen and not described but um yeah it was very it was very very scandalous very weird very out there i wish i could have i've i i showed up in san francisco too late i've heard so many good stories about that particular space yeah it was like a warhol event i mean it's legendary it seems um, yeah it was it was tremendous it was tremendous yeah. Well, now it's a now it's a, a puppy farm. I'm mean, not a farm. It's a puppy hotel. There are dogs. Um, yeah, it's closed for now. But I went back and looked at it, and you know the stud is blanched white, and the OB offices are a, a, a dog hotel. Um, Cornelius, can you tell us when you started writing? Was it me that hired you? You had written before, yes. I oh, get ready. Hold on to your seats, everyone. What had happened in the '90s? The gay '90s. And uh, I went to a dance concert. I bought tickets for a dance concert. Hello, Bellas. And what happened was a gentleman heard me describing the dance group. And he told me that he had a magazine. This was in New Orleans. The magazine was called Decisions Magazine. And he asked me to write an article about it since I knew so much about the, the dance group. So I did. And so he booked me as a columnist. And um, the next thing I knew, I was writing for a bunch of magazines, straight and gay. And I became a journalist, photojournalist, columnist. And then what happened was Hurricane Katrina. Right. In 2005. And I wanted to relocate to L.A., but for some reason, none of my L.A. friends were able to get in touch with me. So I did have a friend in Oakland, and so I relocated to Oakland and a lovely lady whose name I have written down. I don't remember it. She turned me on to you all, the Bay Area Reporter newspaper. And Cynthia was smart enough, gracious enough and stylish enough to put me the openly gay Katrina evacuee <laughs> on the cover of the paper. <laughs> Very wise decision because I'd also been on the cover of the Washington Post. I'd also been quoted Fox News. And what you all have done has, you've kept me on. And so what you all have been gracious and smart enough to do is <laughs> give me assignments that keep me out of trouble and things that I'm passionate about, dance, music, fashion, art, erotica. And I've been able to kind of structure at the beginning, particularly the first couple of years, you all would give me these assignments and then I would be able to kind of structure my life around it because I was, I have to admit, I was suffering from PTSD. And so to be able to go on an assignment, get dressed, create questions, interview, take photos, et cetera, it really focused me. And I've always admired the Bay Area Reporter newspaper. Uh, I would get issues from time to time when I was in New Orleans. And to literally come here and have the offices in the same building as the stud. And, <laughs> and to Next meet door. someone like Adriana. Adriana, I cannot begin to tell you how important you are to me. Oh my visually. God, I no idea. Thank you. Visually. Visually, because 
you were working for this paper and I knew you had a very prominent job and you were very creative. And then you were this fabulous DJ and you were always serving these fabulous visuals. You are a representative of San Francisco to me. Oh, well, thank you. And I, I just I, want to tell you that. And I admire all of you. Some of you I've never met. But the only <laughs> thing that I can say to you all is that you're gracious enough to let me be me. And you are all also carrying gay culture. And I want you all to be encouraged to continue to do so. Thank you, Cornelius. I appreciate that. You're, you're an inspiration. You, uh, what I love, I mean, you, you could hop between a Halston film series, the TV series review, and when we still had a reason to do it, interview with performers at Knob Hill Cinema. And humanizing sex workers was, you know, something that, again, we'll get a little bit individuals, but y'all can watch my and John Carr's and Cornelius's chat about the sexy aspects of the paper, which I always found highly amusing. Um, I <laughs> well, to me, let me say this. I grew up during the sexual revolution. Let me, let became, me uh, sorry. Mark, if you can duck out, I'm going to try to get John Carr back because we're talking about his stuff. So yes. I don't see him. I think he's completely logged off. So, and Will, Will Snyder is completely not there. Keep going. Sorry. Okay. I grew up during the sexual revolution. And so to me, all of that is the same things. Uh, porn is a performance art also. And it has all of the aspects of cinema, lighting, cinematography, costumes, makeup, hair, sets. And you know, that's how I see it. And your one of your our biggest clients was the Knob Hill Theater, the legendary <laughs> Knob Hill Theater. Yeah. No, it's a legend. <laughs> it, oh, and to be legendary is their goal. Okay. And what they had was a professional setup. So I literally had like a particular seat that I would sit in, create my composition with my camera, steady it on my knee, <laughs> and just know the lighting would be perfect, the stage would be perfect, I knew the dimensions, I knew the composition, and I would get the most amazing photos, and I created a website about that. Yes. Um, and so I'm sorry we couldn't use all your photos. You sent me some photos that weren't appropriate for our current news or recent newspaper, but still quite appreciated. Uh, well, you know, I hope you appreciate them to some Diana Ross and some Barry White and a good lube. <laughs> Speaking of the Terpsichorean arts, Paul Parrish, can I uh, abruptly segue to your career? When did you start writing dance specifically for the paper? Um, well, I, uh, I was reading Keith White in the 80s. Uh, uh, he was... I, I'd actually like to talk more about Keith, frankly, than myself, because I think he was a really good, good, good writer, and that I, I'm a pretty good critic, and, and that Keith was great. And uh, in any case, I started writing, uh, I started reading the paper because of his dance reviews, which right. were as good as anything out of New York. Right. Uh, and I agree. Thank you. Uh, he just could. He would do <coughs> everything. Uh, he would like see 40 shows a year, maybe write 35, wow. I mean, wow. uh, 35, 40 columns a year. Wow. And and he gave everybody um, his attention. And if they were doing something that was interesting uh, and they were working in a basement with barely any light, but what it was was interesting, he gave them a good review. And he gave it all on their terms. So he was good at San Francisco Ballet because they were dancing well, and he uh, and so on. And it was just fantastic to read it because he would he would go see uh, folk dance concerts. He would go to the Hawaiian guys that are doing the the, the erotic dances in honor of King, King Kamehameha's uh, penis. Uh, and and <laughs> it was a it was a good column, and it was not raunchy. It was. He was always civilized, and he was always right to the core of it. And he he got it with uh, Joe Good right off the bat, and he got it with Alonzo King right off the bat, and uh, and and everybody. Hmm. And and so there was he was doing just the 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 very best kind of criticism that had to do with you know this isn't just. A visual art. He went actually to one performance where there was mostly bodybuilders and then a lot of uh, uh, folder all around them, feathers and and you know a, a, a cabaret show. 
Uh, and he said that uh, this is basically a decorative art. Which, in fact, I, said, I think that's just, it's just brilliant because it really wasn't about moving. Uh, and he was interested in all those things. He could do all the stuff. He could design the costumes. He could play the music. Uh, all, he, uh, all of the, he had training. Uh, he'd been offered a scholarship to School of American Ballet, and he didn't take it. But he was good enough to be like Verdi offered him a scholarship. Right. And, uh, and so he had all the background. And he also happened to have a job working uh, at the State Supreme Court of California. And he was so efficient that he was done by 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. So he had some time on his hands with which he could write. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's a difficult art form to turn into words because it's the least, the art form that is the least about words. As a form right. of personal dancer, I can, I feel that. It's hard to describe what happened on stage if you don't know the vocabulary. And you and other, like Deborah Chow for the Village Voice, you can tell that they did dance because they know how to describe what's happening because they've done it themselves. I want to say I have a, a serious dance background too. And in the arts, dance is considered the bastard stepchild of the arts. And so anybody that has that facility to give that spotlight to the dance community, I appreciate them very much. And, uh, you know, it's all about movement. Movement is life. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, what I would say Keith could do, and I've, I've got some talent in this direction, is to say what the performance was like. Yeah. And if you, if you say she danced like smoke, well, I've given you something. Mm -hmm. You weren't there, uh, but I hope you will believe me. Yeah. And um, I'm thinking of Julia Adam as in the Arabian dance from the Nutcracker, and it's supposed to be like the smoke coming out of the, out of the lantern. And she, yeah, and she danced like smoke. Okay. And, and uh, so it's not too difficult, but you have to be kind of poetic. Yeah. Lyrical. Yeah. yeah thank you. Abrupt segue time, Cynthia. We didn't get to you. I really want to like from the uh, from the poetic and smoky to the fact based and journalistically objective and practical. Uh, for your this is an amazing thing. Uh, tell tell us a little bit about your background. You were assisted to Mike Salinas. Did you start that way or what happened? Yeah, well, actually, I started as a freelancer, probably in 1995, and I had also freelanced for Out Now the gay paper in San Jose, which went defunct. And then an opening came up and Mike interviewed me in 1996. I started in May of that year. So it's been 26 years. Wow. And then I believe Mike left in 1999 and that's when I became news editor. So I started like right before Pride. It was a very busy time. Um, I believe Adriana had just redesigned the paper um, one of the first issues, I think, was our was the opening of the Hormel Center at the library. And I know that was a wow. very visual cover mm. um, with all of that. Um, so, so yeah. So now I oversee the new section. Um, I have two assistant editors, Matthew Bajaco and Eric Burkett, who just started about six weeks ago, and then. Uh, core freelancers like Liz and a few others that have been, most have been with us a long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just try to cover the news. Um, I have a, a journalism background. I worked for a small paper in Northern California right out of college. And then that paper went bankrupt. So I moved back down to the Bay Area because that's where my family was and I could have a place to live for free. <laughs> Um, and then I did some nonprofit work for a couple, few years um, and then discovered the BAR. And I, I remember when Cornelius, when we connected, it was, it was on a weekend uh, shortly after Hurricane Katrina, um, probably on a very old cell phone. And um, <laughs> yeah, we did that story and you wanted a Vespa. And now I, I want to buy one. <laughs> but people won't let you in buildings with like mopeds and vestas, and they're and not the sidewalk, young man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but then somebody might steal it. Yeah, uh, and so you know, I'm thinking about getting uh the, the electric bikes, uh, yeah. people might steal it. 
Yeah. I remember the story. I told you I wanted a job, a man in a moped. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, like a year later, I ran into Adriana and Adriana went, did you get a man, a job in a moped? <laughs> and I'm like, job, yes, first. Moped, no. Moped, not yet. Okay. Man. Never. No, never. We'll, we'll talk. We got to talk. <laughs> talk. I'm going to segue to our lovely slideshow and see if it works. And what if you make it? What <laughs> Liz, 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 I'm Liz. sorry. I thought we already did. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Liz. So you oh. started with science or you were doing other freelance work beforehand? Um, I did a lot of things. I, I had been a member of ACT UP in Boston when I moved here. And um, I, uh, I moved here in 94 and got a job with uh, San Francisco AIDS Foundation editing there um, on the staff of their treatment magazine, used to be called Beta at the time. And um, a lot happened in 96. That's the first year I wrote for BAR. I went to the, um, the uh, International AIDS Conference in, uh, in Toronto, or excuse me, it was in Vancouver, which was when the, the, the first year when they announced um, that protease inhibitors were out, which enabled um, combination HIV treatment, which really turned the epidemic around and, um, and wow. you know, got people off their deathbeds. So I was at the conference, um, had never written for the BAR before. I, I actually contacted um, Bay Times and asked them if they wanted me to cover it. I never heard back. So it's like I kind of sent a cold email to Mike Salinas and said, you know, I'm here. You want me to cover it for you? And I did. And um, it was the days when you, you know, we took photos and ran our film to the one hour photo thing and then ran the things to FedEx and mailed it to him. So I came back from that trip and, um, you know, the cover story was on my desk at the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. And I've uh, written about HIV and other um, mostly medical science ever since. The, the next thing I af did after that was um, a, a raid on uh, Dennis Perron's Cannabis Buyers Club, which was sort of the start of uh, the passage of uh, Prop 215, the medical marijuana law later that year. So that was when I got my start. Everybody, everything was in 96, I guess, 95. 96. Those hot 90s. And yeah. I just, Christopher and I, 90s. Chris, Chris and I were talking, I don't know who's getting their notifications, but whoever is, turn the voice, the volume off on that. That would be great. Um, I suspected Cynthia, but I don't know. It's probably um, me. Okay, we'll turn that volume down, please. I don't um, know. Okay, that's okay. I don't want to push. But Chris and I were talking off stage beforehand about the analog days and how all of us, most of us, are part of that era before the internet, before we actual paste up, waxing, you know, photostats to a cardboard piece of paper and putting the paper together and hoping that the little pieces of corrections didn't fall off. Don't remember that. Let's just let's just all salute each other. It was a different time. There were there were there were mornings there before it went to press when I would go down there obsessively looking over the edges, the ends of you know, doing these corrections, check slugs kind of things to make sure that the the ends matched what I thought were the last rounds. So right. it, it was crazy. It, was, it but Adriana <laughs> always did a very, very good job at at cutting cutting things at the right point. Well, so. I mean, I I think uh, I mean through a bit of your tutelage because I you know was a designer that then started to do writing and uh, and you encouraged that, and so I was also approaching the design aspect f with you know knowing how to to write and edit. You know, I you were still... <laughs> you're you you were an editor friendly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I still do a newspaper once a year at Burning Man. So <laughs> this clear, <laughs> this like... clear, name it, yeah. Yeah. and it's BRC... a book as well. Well, yeah, it's now known as the BRC Weekly, but that is like the <laughs> one little the little little piece of my my publishing and journalistic career that I'm like still hanging on to. Well, that's that's something that I think um um you know um your predecessors, Scott, and mostly um, Kurt, and I worked with Kurt on creating Bar Tab, which we'll see a few, too many pictures in the slideshow, but Max and Ernesto, they're intuitive and they understand editorial, so they understand, well, what, how to shape the, the look of the, of the thing and what's more important, and that's something that I, I treasure, that I can leave the paper and just go, tell me when it's done, I look at the PDF and there's just a few, you know, italics 
typos. There's, it's, it's not like a major problem. We had a few designers in between who just didn't get it at all, and they didn't last very long. And I, I don't remember the names. That's how far. <laughs> anyway, let's go into. I'm sorry to say that I think when I bring the stream up, somebody has to get kicked out. Let's see what happens when I add the. Oh my God. Look design. at that beautiful cutting edge design. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at that beautiful cutting edge. Let me see if I can get it, this to work right. There we go. Okay, this is what I want to do is y'all just comment. This is the first issue. Oh, wow. oh my God. And the entire oh, cover is an ad. ad. <laughs> that, that happened through many years. That happened through the years. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to scroll. Oh, I have to do this. Slide number two. Oh, my God. I love it. This was the early party going on. Uh, Can, you oh, see my cursor? Can you see my cursor waggling around? No. No. Okay, I'm going to... 1971. 1971. This is the, the theater coverage for early production. And this is an, the first it's Sweet Lips. Oh. Sweet Lips. Sweet Lips who Sweet wrote lips. who wrote all their articles on bar napkins, right? Well, was that what? Really true? <laughs> that was what I always heard. Who wrote half of them. <laughs> Tom or Mike, do you want to editorialize? Sweet Go ahead. Sweet Lips kept... Uh, there was a time there were 164 gay bars in San Francisco, and Sweet Lips kept a map <laughs> of what they were, and Bob printed it, and that was an insert in the BAR every week where all the gay bars were in, in San Francisco. Oh, my I God. Know. I love it. Yeah, Lips the Miracle Mile. Oh, my God. You're Those were the days. Yeah, Bob Wall said Street. that he could he could buy and set up a bar in, for $60,000. <laughs> I'm well, sure. I'll take, I'll take them odds. It's yeah. in, it's in his uh, oral history. Oh, yeah. Leather column. Another yes, early right? columnist uh, was Marcus, Marcus Hernandez, a.k.a. Mr. Marcus. He was uh, not only an emperor, am I right, but he was also a, a, the first le leather columnist in the world. Wow. He was. Yeah. He was the first emperor. Ah, there we go. Which was like seven after Empress. They only had Empress for a few years, and then they added to Emperor. That's right. Yeah, okay. that's why the numbers are askew. Okay. And you know, Jim, th th this this signifies the contribution that Bob Ross made in creating the newspaper because Bob traveled in, in different circles. He was in the leather circle. He was in the court circle. Right. He was in the political circle. And he saw that that the different groups within the community weren't speaking to one that I mean they had no information yeah. about what was happening yet we were being attacked from all sides oh. the police and, and, and the establishment so that was really the motivation to start the paper and to 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 get columnists from all of the world so you had Mr. Marcus in from from the leather word you had sweet lips in the bar scene you had Harvey Milk in the political scene and finally started people started communicating with one another because they saw what the different communities were doing. And that, yeah, that was Bob Ross's genius in this paper. Yeah. yeah, He had that range that's so important still. Also to have, I'll get to the sports stuff, but Tom Waddell being your one of your early, well, not early, but one of your sports columnists was a perfect choice. I love how in the 70s there was always a sexy picture, often a sexy picture next to some, you know, crime story. They knew what led in. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you didn't have, you, they, well, you couldn't get a photo of a crime committed often. So it's like, well, Casey. <laughs> I'll put a cute boy on there instead. <laughs> hey, marketing, marketing. Now inside we have Donald McLean, who was one of the first editors and also a notable drag performer who was, uh, if you look on the drag panel and the other panels, he was uh, also featured on uh, All in the Family, the Archie Bunker TV show, the first out drag character on TV in the 70s, I think. Wow. Um, he was a prolific writer and editor for the paper, and he, there was also crime. I'm going to go chronologically, so we're kind of jumping between arts and nightlife and sexy and violent, so the famous SIR building arson, question mark. And here's Sweet Lips. <laughs> Oh, I just love this. I want this on a t-shirt. Michael, we got to get products. I want this on a t-shirt because this is just... It's genius. <laughs> yeah, if you get one, let me know. Oh, this is the, the amazing Immortal Sweet Lips. Right well, next to you. Yes. This was... <laughs> Patty Hochtel wrote that column for years. <laughs> yes, he ghost wrote it, and then it was bequeathed to me through um, through his caretaker. Uh, Koi, Koi uh, was a, a very polite caretaker who finished the sentences. Anyway, 
<laughs> nightlife events were very different. There was a cowboy contest where there was alleged cheating. I don't, I don't, I read this whole thing and I can't remember, but it was scandalous for the day. As was the laughing policeman, a film with the then handsome actor whose name I can't read. You must know who it is. Anyway, there was a, there was a homophobic. Bruce Dern. Yes, thank you, Bruce Dern. And uh, allegedly a homophobic homicide in the content. And this is where the activism of reviews kind of got, uh, you know, they, they really started up that-, that Yeah, you're right. The writers, although there's no byline, the writers were able to say, this is not good. We're, we're tired of this, these stereotypical right. depictions. Um, and speaking of stereotypical de depictions, here are a bunch of white people dressed up like cowboys and Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Marcus is in the lower right at, at a, at a uh, South of Market, quote, wedding. <laughs> Marcus Welby, again, no byline. I'm always suspicious of not by unbylined articles, but I'm sure it was probably Don McLean because he was there at the time. But everyone remember the Marcus Welby homophobic at, uh, segment? You can find it on YouTube. It was awful. Uh, violence and shooting and ballet, an interesting juxtaposition. And Marcel Marceau, again, this is mid 70s, we're talking. Empress Doris the 10th, or X, 1875. This is one of my favorites, of course, the Acme Man. There was a beer company that had a hot guy contest, and so they dubbed this guy Mr. Acme for 1975. Mm -hmm. If camp. Like Freedom Day always had a one or two page spread of photos and 1975 was no different. Here are some muscle guys, some people dressed up in various outfits. And this is the most, probably the most famous cover. Wow. We covered this in Ron Will with Ron Williams who photographed this from the previous year and then they used it for, to promote Gay Freedom Day in 75. Um, Doris, Empress 10, rode the elephant with uh, caretakers from some zoo that was nearby. And uh, because of all the ruckus and the difficulties that happened, she was asked to not bring an elephant again the next year. Um, wow. Anyone else knows? Beautiful cover. Of course, this is going down Polk Street when the Gay Freedom Day Parade went down Polk Street. Wow. Wow. Remember Street? Wow. Yeah, and there's only good. one gay bar left on Polk Street these yeah. days. It's so sad. There were we nothing but gay bars. On on Polk, which, 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 which bar is on Polk Street now? The, the Cinch. The Cinch Saloon uh, is Cinch, still yeah. there. Cinch. That's where I got my DJ career started. <laughs> it's at the Cinch. <laughs> Again, uh, politics and porn mixing well together in the BAR. And here, oh, sorry, John Carr has logged off. I think he, he cannot get in. I'm sorry about the capacity. Let me, um, but this is one of John Carr's first Broadway columns. He's talking about a production of, of Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly, yes. And here's George Haymont, a notorious opera reviewer whose salacious, sometimes <laughs> odd and eccentric reviews were sometimes controversial. I'll just leave oh, it Oh, yeah, there. absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, murders, suspects, the, the South Bay uh, subsection was an interesting addition in the, in the late 70s as well as sketches of serial assaults and criminals. And before it was actually the leather page, it was Bob's Bazaar, mm. where the naughty stuff took place. Mm. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into all the Lion Pub ads because that's, and here's a very, uh, it, because of the paper was bi-weekly at the time, Harvey Milk and George Moscone's assassination was not really covered too sensationally or much at all. It was a week and a half later when this is the first item that appeared in page, oh, yeah. page three. It was very odd. I, I was very surprised to see that. There was an ad on the cover for another one that we saw before. That's and then, then um, of course, Wayne Friday included Harvey and George in his subsequent column. Yes, and oh. I, should, I should talk a little bit about Wayne. He was our longtime political editor. He knew Bob from back in the day and um, he was an investigator for the DA's office. He also served on the police commission for many years. And he would um, hand in his column typewritten back in the old days when I was first news editor. And I'd have to type it into the computer and or scan it in or something. But um, yeah, we had OCR always, software. I'm sure we yeah, scanned it. He always got a lot of dish from the local politicians. They were calling him all the time with how to get their favored position into his column or 
talk about a candidate they wanted to win election in his column. And, and he actually uh, made his own endorsements separate from the paper for many years, which most of the time aligned with Bob's, but not always. Mm. And uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, he retired, I think, in the early 2000s or mid 2000s. Mid 2000s. Okay. And um, <clears throat> died several years ago. He had uh, Parkinson's disease. And Wayne followed that up with a look at the alleged killer, Dan White. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, thought he, I thought he confessed when he was caught, but um, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a journalistic safety. Moving abruptly to sexual-based ads, the Jaguar has been a supporter of the paper for decades. Oh, back to serial killers and bodies in the poke. Dear. Oh, wow. <laughs> but can we appreciate just for a minute this, this logo? <laughs> oh my god, I, I actually, I'm, logo, I'm, yes. I'm kind of loving it actually. It just screams bow chicka bow wow. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Again, Mike, t shirts, merchandise. Yes, yes. Again, continue. Adriana, that's a horrible logo. Please. It is, but I, I, I have this like. It's beautiful and it's horrible. I, I, I have this appreciation for 70s kitschy retro. Me too. Me here. too. Match well, 74. Yes. It it's will look great on a t-shirt. It's brittle, but it's stupid. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing at a cover page about the night white night riots with these incinerated police cars. I, I, I love that. That's that's I'm only I, talking about the logos. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Continuing uh, our artistic bombs, cruising. Political yes. phone coverage again. Michael Lackey's Lassie's coverage of the of the controversies, etc., of of the Al Pacino film of your you Love young the soundtrack. Look it up, look it up, kids, and you'll figure out why. We're not going to go into that. We did that yeah. in the arts panel in the film panel actually with Brian Bromberger and um, and uh, Brandon Judell. You can look that up on our YouTube channel. I love this coverage just because of its simplicity. Yeah. Yes. Tenth anniversary, yay party, great um, nail bonding. Oh, and, this is hot. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, owes a lot to the Frisco Follies. That's all I'll say. I can see it, too. Yeah, That's can you a gorgeous it? photo. Yeah. I, I, I want to go in a TARDIS and see that. And a Divine, oh, Halloween, Divine Halloween with Sharon McKnight. You can look up our channel. <laughs> Her and, and Mark Abramson is also on our YouTube channel and on the Facebook page that you're watching probably right now. Here's just a nice Marcus Calm. There's Marcus. And with Al Parker. The late ATN on the left and the late Al Parker on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, photographed by the late and proli prolific and artistic Robert Prusan. He was a frequent mm -hmm. photo contributor to the paper yes. in all kinds of things, particularly the gay games and the leather community. And here's an East Bay map. You referenced before earlier that there were maps. And here's something, a little travel. More film coverage of the biggest movie, biggest movie, gay movie flop of the century. <laughs> What there year are we on now? We are on like 1981. Eight, eight, I thought Making Love was 81. No, we're up to 85 right now because I was in college then. So it must have okay. been 84, 85 when I saw okay. it. Oh, you missed 1981, which is when they had their first HIV coverage. And it, it was AIDS at the time. or It wasn't even named at the time. It and was weren't like, they calling it GRID? GRID. Yes. GRID. It's like yeah, it was like Yeah, it was we have Liz participated in and was excellent with, along with Tom Birch, who did the obituary project uh, in our AIDS panel uh, um, with uh, other guest speakers. You can look up that on our YouTube. And this is kind of greatest hit, so I couldn't get everything in or it'd be three hours long. Estenote, it was great. Now it's gone. Um, another Marcus column with hunks at the Russian River, which we also covered frequently. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did. One of my yes, favorites, Gay Games 1, all, Gay Olympics abruptly changed to Gay Games. In 1982, Keysar Stadium, you know I, how I love the sports writing. So I'm going to switch abruptly to stream number two. We're going to talk about Bob Ross for a bit. He started off as a chef. Hmm. Yep. He was a cook on a submarine. Oh, my God. Oh, Is wow. that Bob? Got Bob, name. yeah. Bob Ross. That's Bob. <laughs> <laughs> this is the photo by <laughs> Henry Lee. Yes, Lee. on Polk Street. Poor oh, come on. Really? Is it really Bob? It really is. Yes. <laughs> I scanned this photo at the GLBT Historical Society from the Henry Lilu uh, archives while I was doing the sports exhibit. I found that and said, we gotta have this. 
I so guess, thank you, I, TLBT Historical Society and Henry Lee Lewis State. <laughs> so let's move on quickly. Bob became which emperor? Which number was he? Anyone? Tom? <laughs> I, I don't know which number he was. He became an emperor. We have that. It's in the paper. You can look up on the archive.org and find more. And here's... Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> Oh, There's the Bob we yeah. remember. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, put the checkbook back in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're putting Michael back in. Are you, are you still with his mic? You don't have to go because here you are in the 80s. I'm looking quite stylish with the turtleneck and the goatee. <laughs> I think you look great, Michael. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not being sarcastic. No, sad. I think you look great. And I'm not being sarcastic either. You look great. Okay. So Tom on the, on the right, Bob, and who's on the left? Someone in Jerry Apodaca. He was governor of New Mexico when, oh. when we hosted the Democratic Convention in 1984. I was the lawyer for the host committee, oh. and we had each state had a different party, uh, had had a party in in a in a home, and I hosted the New Mexico delegation because that's where I'm from. Oh, okay. he was the governor at the time. Okay, I knew, you guys hobnob with the famous people. It was always fun to have, we would have the BAR Christmas parties, as you all know, usually at Ivy's in the old days, and all the politicians would come in in glad hand and shake hands, and I was always very impressed. Speaking of famous people, here we are, Willie Brown, former mayor of two times, Bob Ross, Sweet Lips, and Wayne Friday, all together. I think that's the late 80s. Mm. No, that was the 90s that's of early 90s anniversary sure. parties. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. And Sweet Lips was getting a commemoration from somebody important. Yeah. He got, got a. I'm trying to look at the timestamp on the photo, and it says three nine thirty one eighty one. Anyway, here's, you're having fun, Chris. Here's here's Bob with Jane. Jane, our printer of the olden days. Oh yes. Jane uh, lived on Waller Street and rented the apartment to Mike Salinas and his boyfriend Tiff Rice at the time. Uh -huh. Jane was great. Um, but the, I don't know what Mike. What happened to that pr their printer? When did we? Why did we switch? Well, she worked for Waller Press. That was our original printer for the at the uh, in the early days. Because right. we, believe it or not, um, we had trouble finding a printer according to the uh, folklore, right? Oh. And Waller Printer was a family-owned business. They lived on Waller Street, and they moved to South. They moved their plant to South uh, South San Francisco, but. They took us on as an early client, and we uh, were with them for several decades. But Jane, she was um, the only lesbian that worked in in the company, and so they always sent her to come pick up the the flats to take right. back to the press. Yeah, and um, but she grew up with the family. Um, she was a neighbor of theirs, and so they knew her as a family friend. But it was kind of funny. They always sent you know, like the one lone lesbian to come pick the paper <laughs> in the bar. And then so um, so for the longest time, it wasn't until her retirement party that people didn't really know what where Jane was going. They were like, oh, she's going to the bar. She's going to the bar. And they thought she was going to the to a bar. And they'd be like, God, she's <laughs> drinking too early in the afternoons. And it would, you know, be this whole misunderstanding. And so it was really funny when it all came out. They were like, what? She was going to the bar newspaper all of these years. We thought she was going to the a bar, the bar, and getting drunk. So, but that was Jane, yeah. And then she, when she retired, she and her partner uh, moved up north. Yeah, okay. and retired. Yeah, I, that's why I always resent people calling it the bar. I always say B A R because it's like, or spell it out because it's very easy no. to get confused. Not yes. that I haven't worked in bars. We all have. Um, Switching ahead to the dog show. I love this two-page spread. It's it's some things we like for the year of 1982. And of course, in the center, there's Sharon, the ubiquitous Sharon McKnight, but also Shirley MacLaine, who hosted a dog show. And the winner, if you look in the middle, I, I didn't provide a Zoom photo, is this hot guy in leather with a Doberman pincher. Mm -hmm. or, no, a German Shepherd, I think. Anyway, look it up on archive.org. Here's some AIDS, this, uh, Liz. AIDS, a lesbian perspective, and safe sex had already been introduced into the vocabulary by this time. I think we're still in 1982. Yeah. Oh, Corral. Woohoo! Two paid spread plus an ad. And El Rio when they used to advertise with us. Yay. Yeah. Here's Sylvester and Shirley McLean and Debbie Allen or no? Anyway, moving on. Here's a piece on Sister Boom Boom. 
What somebody's voice is muffled. You're mu you're muted, Cynthia. Uh, okay. What were you saying? I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Anyway, Sister Boom Boom, one of the early founders of the Sisters Perpetual Indulgence. Put this in because Larry. Uh, the below the fold is Larry Kramer's famous 1,112 and counting from the New York native. Uh, his warning cry about AIDS in March. The bathhouses were making pages, uh, front pages for years. Oh, yes. Closing, opening, here's closing again. The mayor, everybody's getting involved. We open. They're open, they're closed. Um, here's a more, more police abuse is really run rampant. I, in the crime pa uh, panel, you can see more, but there's a lot of uh, policemen, firemen, trashing gay bars, assaulting. Here's some good news. The documentary, Harvey Mil Times of Harvey Milk, won an Oscar. Again, Adriana, 80s graphics. We love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One color per week. And poor Dan White, goodbye. Um, yeah, singular monochromatic colors. Here's Jose Saria on a little tour that he took. Wow. Frightening news. State quarantine. Remember the R Lyndon LaRouche? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The 80s. Yeah. Uh, uh, an inappropriately sexy ad about the AIDS test, I think. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I like, and here's some, this is what usually was on the back section to advertise the knob hill before they got a little classier. I just love it. Cornelius, I think you agree. It's just so crass. It's so explosive. It's just I bad graphics. It. It's, it's, so so <laughs> it's so romantic. It's so romantic. It's so crowded. I, I just don't get it. I, it's it's just, you, you, you have to be a certain age to understand the crowdedness yeah, yeah. the well, bodies and the composition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At the same time we were celebrating the body, we were celebrating, we were mourning the dead. The it, yes. obituary started just rising to two, the average two pages by 1983, as I've looked. And yes. what we did was they raised funds. They raised money. Sharon McKnight and there's Bob Ross on a float at Gay Pride. This is the most festive thing. These are Marcus's photos. Marcus Hernandez's photos. Every penny counts was the AIDS emergency funds uh, phrase. And they raised in hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, through the little plastic buckets you'd see in shops around yes. town. Yes. But Sharon was a trooper. She was always there for, and to see Bob up on a, like up on a stick on top of this, like a, like a wedding cake. It was fairly really hilarious. Here's some <laughs> more, here's some more Marcus photos, lovely in color with Beautiful. Sharon and Mr. Leather Guy. And this was a Father's Day giveaway where they had auctioned off uh, various sexy things, uh, Marcus photos that we found. These are Rick Gerhardt's photos from the Castro attack that the police did. Right. Mm -hmm. Love Mr. Gellhauser. I love Rick. Uh, he did some great work for this paper. He really did. Yes. Rick really has been did. photographing for decades and um, yes. Yes. had a front row seat to a lot of our coverage. Wait, I, I have to tell a funny story. Cynthia, okay. you may or may not remember this. Uh, when I got here, you all did, like I said, the story on me being a Katrina evacuee and Rick shot my photo for the cover. Rick asked me to smile. Ugh. And I'm like, Rick, I just survived the greatest natural catastrophe in the yeah. history of North America. Smiling would not be appropriate. <laughs> this is a very somber piece. And he was yes. like, oh, yeah. And so <laughs> people have told me that they remember that photo still. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Rick and uh, Jane Cleland and Gooch are all in a, and Ron Williams as well, are all in a photo chat, excuse me, photo chats from our first and second chats that you can find on YouTube. I would have asked Rick, but again, it, it, we did a whole thing where dozens of his amazing photos yeah. like this that really captured an era. Yes. Um, too. It yes. does a lot more travel. Um, now, people say, and, and folks in China, there was a history of the paper being thought of as the old white guy paper from the gay community, but there was coverage of African Americans and people of color. Yes. Uh, and, and certainly Marlon Riggs was one of the most prominent people to deserve coverage, and his uh, videos and, um, and poet Essex Hempel in behind him in the photo on the, to on the top. Did legends, the legends, oh. legends. Being of Gar McVeigh Russell says Castro sweep. I was there. God, I hope you didn't lose your shoes like mayor, the mayor did, or I forget what happened. Um, I, I didn't know you were here that long, Gar. That's amazing. Gar is a poet. He's been part of my one of my uh, reading groups. 
at the lit crawl. So gotta get a little act up in. Yay to act up. Um, this is kind of a generic holiday photo. Uh, and here we go back to the sexy where usually two to four pages of escort ads filled the back pages. Now we had to tell the story. Oh, sometimes a lot more than that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Back in the early days. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sometimes it could be 60% of the paper. <laughs> Who's talking? Tom. Sex sells, darling. So the running gag that we have, I, I don't know those of a certain era who, who can attest is Monday noon was the deadline to pay for your recurring or new escort ads. So we would be yes. upstairs in the office and just happen to have to get some more coffee from the gigantic industrial strength restaurant <laughs> urn that, co that the coffee was made in. And we would peek around the little doorway to see which of the hustlers were standing up in line with their little dirty go-go crumpled tips from go-going or whatever, however they got their money. I, I always, was <laughs> you know, you'd see a cult model in a magazine and then a week later you'd see him in the office, just, you know, putting down 60 bucks for an ad. I, I just, I like, have an, I have an and, anecdote. I have an anecdote about Monday mornings. Bobby <laughs> called me and, and he would say, let's have lunch. Come down, come down at, at 1130 or whatever. <laughs> and then, so I, yeah, what Bob would do is Bob would take one of the one of the the desks on the on the main level, yeah, and he would have all the the, the mail that, that hadn't been opened, and then he and I would sit and we would sit behind this desk as all the boys came in to pay for their ads, <laughs> and we would just open the mail. Like, all right, I have something about that too because <laughs> Go ahead. this this is in like the nineties now and Bob would sit down there and there'd be a big wad of cash out of his shirt pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That's so romantic. Oh my God. He even smoked a cigar indoors as I recall. That was another thing too. Oh, anyway. So back to activism act up at Bush era. My God, Bush won. Innocent times. Here's some more obituaries, including a feature on Dennis Lynn Kirshner. I had to ob edit obituaries for two years. It was very frustrating, but fulfilling because you really had to tell someone's whole life story in a few hundred words. And they were often sent in handwritten and usually the surviving partner forgot to even mention his or her own name. So oh, wow. Yes. you had to call them back and say, who are you? They were such grief that they oh. forgot themselves. Um, very, very, and I had to write some for friends that I knew from New York who were kind of bi-coastal and died, including porn actor, Jake Corbin. So it was very touching, but a real burden. Um, Great subtext. Yeah. At the yeah. same time, again, still celebrating sexuality. Here's Graylin Thornton winning and a bunch of hunks that were really hot in the 90s, as were we all, it seems. Anyway, um, Marcus got supported by all these sex venues, which I find very amusing. I, I think this is art, just the, the arrangement of all it the. It is. It's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at the lighting on the image on the lower left. Yeah, yeah, just as a, wow. as a whole, the circles, the angles, I just love it. Love it. I wish I could save all my old, and this you can't see the the wrinkle is from the scanning, but I was doing the calendar at this time, and I took any opportunity to be creative, including um, using this anti-fascist heartfelt collage on top, but I really kind of got over, went overboard a few times, but that was one of my best ones. Um, <laughs> And the upper right, Cynthia, you can comment on the endorsements, which frequently ran in the paper for weeks on end before elections, right? Oh, Cynthia, you still with us? Oh, oh, she stepped out. Moving on. <laughs> Cast oh, here we go. Infamous, oh. famous. Oh, Everyone yeah. knows. Yeah. I, if I would have known that this cover would be so iconic. infamous, iconic, I would have used a different font. <laughs> I, I wish I wish it was like all caps. It should have yeah. been yeah. all caps. Yeah. Uh, that style didn't work in this time. And we can't yeah. find a non-yellowed actual version of the paper either. Um, uh, anyone finds one that doesn't look like it was uh, peed on, please send it to us. <laughs> please. I think it's powerful enough as it is. Okay. Just get somebody actually, to Photoshop it. Yeah. Get someone to Photoshop it. I've actually always appreciated it that it kept with our down style of headlines. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, it was on the top of a stack in, in the office for years. That's why it turned yellow from the sun. Yeah. Because it was by the window, as I recall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, didn't, Every, we don't appreciate how important things are. Um, every little sign, every little flaw well, I on remember it, like, creates the sense of this being one particular day when this was the news. Yeah. Right. right. But I do remember um, that Mike Salinas actually had this cover planned for weeks. 
because um, we saw the obituaries just you know this is the age of um you know protease inhibitors and it was like it went the obituaries went from six pages to five to four to you know then it was just a handful and it was just right you know each week it's like it's coming and so he he had, he was ready to go yeah yeah it, and it also wasn't completely accurate but we won't go into that no. okay. well there were no, no obituaries it was, it was in accurate. our newspaper it oh. was, yeah, and we made that really clear in the story. It did not mean that nobody didn't die of AIDS that week. Exactly. That right, they, right. We didn't right. get one at the paper, and we right. had gotten them forever, you know, yeah. since the beginning of the epidemic. Right. Okay. Exactly. So so, Adriana, is this peak you? Is this early redesign you? Uh, well, no, I did. This isn't no. a redesign, but this is definitely um, when I was working with the old layout, but trying my best to update it within the format. And I okay. think actually that's an article I wrote, a cozy chat with Marilyn Manson, which is kind of cringy considering, <laughs> yeah, yeah. considering uh, Marilyn Manson's um, uh, predatory yeah. reputation these days. But uh, I, but know, yeah, I, I wrote that. that, that that's my article. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't cancel me. Yeah. <laughs> Just for writing this article. So what was the actress's name who, uh, who went after Evan, him? Evan, Evan Rachel Wood. Evan Rachel Wood. Evan Rachel Wood all the way. Yeah, yeah. I follow her like crazy. Yeah, same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A little yellow. But we got a weird combination of porn. Well, Clyde Barker fits, but oh Evans, probably and drag. This is a bit of a mishmash. This is kind of funny. I think, is this Chris? Is this your era where you have to throw in book review, film? Music, oh, sure. yeah, absolutely, yes. Uh, you know, I used, Take you know, responsibility for that. <laughs> well, no, it was, it was Yamashita. You know, Michael dealt dealt with that stuff. It's like oh, I just had to like, you know, build a columns of copy around that shit. Yeah, so, yeah. It was always a struggle because you know the ads are the ads, and they pay right. they pay the bills. Pay, so um, you just have to fill fill up the blank space, but I know. <laughs> always, you know, we always worked it out though. It's very easy. Really. It wasn't really that complicated, but I know publicists used to hate, you know, right. getting the tear sheets because they were like next to this guy's butt, you know, <laughs> <their hair. laughs> next to their classical music reviewers. Yeah. Like but you know what? That that's a romantic part of gay culture that yeah. in publishing that you have sex and you have art and you have dance and you have, all these things that interest the LGBTQ community, and it's not segmented. It's they paid like, these bills. They, they, those people wow. paid these bills for a long time. Well, you're looking at like two grand in ads right there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. I'm sure Melissa doesn't mind, but I'm. <laughs> Nor did the kids. Remember the, do you guys remember the phrase "the news hole"? No. <laughs> yes. Um, Yes. Yes. Uh, it came in, and uh, when the news hole suddenly became very small, when the price of paper spiked oh. uh, at some point in the '90s, and all of a sudden it was ads everywhere, and the news hole was actually very, very small. Yeah. Okay. Um, there were a lot of robberies and and bank heists in the Castro over the years, as I recall. Oh wow! The paper in the early '90s. Um, this is another little. Castro Street Fair, and this this is uh, Bound, the famous film Bound that just skyrocketed to fame. Gina Gershon and uh, Meg Tilly, because it was a really well made thriller and a, and a lesbian theme film, obviously. Oh, really my God. Made. And it's the Wachowski Wachowskis. brothers. Oh, back the then. Time. Right. Ah. Wachowskis, yes. Right. I love it. I've seen it like five times. Well, yeah. also for Christopher Maloney, who I adore. Now this has some icons. The yeah. person who wrote that review actually wrote so many great reviews for the BAR for years. Erin Blackwell. Erin Blackwell, yeah, yeah. She got canceled, unfortunately. Oh, dear. Well, you know, I, I have to say that for a long time, she was a real contributor. Yeah. The, yeah. Jerome down there, Jerome Kacha, huh? Jerome Kacha. Yeah. I New Look explores the terror. I think he had already died by this time. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. This is 1995, I think. And uh, Mark Eustace above with uh, a filmmaker who I can't, I forgot to to write down. Um, but Mark's Entertainments as well as Jerome. Oh God, I remember Jerome was rocking my place in 1993 or something. He was cock blocking all the guys who were trying to have sex. It was hilarious. Wow, this okay. I'm. I'm. Okay, Adriana. I, well, can you I <laughs> own up to this. I, I. I can own up to this. I, I'm. I'm cringing over here. This is like peak '90s grunge foot, um, typography. Oh my God. Uh, 
<laughs> I love it. I want you. I to love it too. Cover. The curve, the double curve of the text, the the staircase block in the middle, and the ragged whatever uh, you call that font. I just love it. I yeah, it's... it was definitely the age of grunge typography. Absolutely. But, but I still miss. I gotta say, I still miss the uh the masthead looking like that i was so upset when i mean i guess it, it lasted the bar logo that i designed lasted 15 years so i should probably yeah. be proud of that but when yeah. i was like i thought it would last forever no because we when we had to um go into the you know pandemic i had to i had to economize oh, wow anyway serial killer Versace. remember when we were like hunting online to find out where he was he was he was yeah. driving like a maniac and another one you can you have to watch our crime um, panel. Unfortunately, Dennis Conkin broke this story, but he was unavailable. He's in the hospital. But Ed Walsh talked at length about this psychotic beauty who used to be a Pizzoli boy, they called him, Joshua Puckett. He made headlines in our paper and many others. So that was one of the peak moments, I think, of crime reportage. He went to visit him in prison, et cetera. And I yeah. think Adrian helped... Uh, Robert Friedman. It's the byline is Robert or Roberto Friedman was Roberto. doing counter. Roberto. Well, was before Roberto, Roberto, he was Roberto. Robert. Anyway, ah. he's he's much missed. Um, but I love the layout of this. I've saved it because of the look at the way that the 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 balance and the the patterns, the multiple patterns. It's just oh, thank you. I you know I I tried to do a cutout whenever I could. You know, yeah. you're limited with time and you know resources, but. Uh, well, yeah, well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Well, also, Ribeiro had very few photos to choose from, so he went bold and went big. And the costumes and the clothing, the pattern of the tiger compared to the 60s pattern of the dress, it just all works. It's all it works, it works. yes. It's just everything. And around this time, I started my sports column, which was never or often not very serious. Sports Complex, Adrian, <laughs> thank you for that. That What do they call it, the icon or the... The yeah. uh, just the, the little column icons, column yeah. icon, which yeah. perfectly exemplified my head at the time. <laughs> um, I did later take up shot put, but I obviously I was trying for the what Michael Salinas always called the ubic the the hope for triple entendre headline, but I only got a double there. Um, but I had fun with it. We'll we'll come back to that. There were a lot of coverage of national coverage of news as well. Um, and I'm yes. gonna. There was a very large uh, demonstration in the Castro at the time of uh, Billy Joel Gaither's uh, murder. Right. And um, this was a, a very poignant time. And uh, also this um, gentleman who claims to have known Gaither and claims to have known the murderer uh, was interviewed for the paper. I interviewed him and he lived uh, somewhere in around Church Street Station. And were you doing mostly crime reporting at this time, Mark? I was doing a lot of crime. Yeah, there was a lot going on in San Francisco at that time, 98, 99. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. From, from Matthew Shepard on locally. Yes. Let me switch to um, the 90s, to Mike Salinas's yeah, that at, Mike. at Cynthia Road. I was so sad. Yeah. So Mike... Mm -hmm died that summer and then Bob died that December. So it was a real loss wow. that year. Where is this now? 2003. 2003. Huh. Um, yeah, I, I just want to say one thing about Mike and Mike Salinas gave me the space to find my own voice as a journalist. Mm. And, you know, that hadn't really get, been given to me in the same really sort of native way that he had of of uh allowing space and allowing a voice to be heard yeah and, yeah and he could do that like no one else and you knew you got it right with just silence from him and it was perfect <laughs> and it, it was so startling the day you know from walking into his office which was the art motels um gallery with uh body parts all over the room <laughs> And uh, but then walking in after I got hi gotten hired, and seeing Mike, and Cynthia was there, and everything on the walls, you know, posted, all, all hunky men all over the room, and uh, the flyers and whatnot. But uh, it was all very sexual, and and then the day Mike decided to move back to New York, and walking in, and all of those pictures were gone. Yeah. 
and everything, all the history of that entire space, the art motel, uh, the motel previously, all that history was just like locked up and, and taken with him in a box, you know, it's like mm. very special. Yeah. Yeah. I had, um, uh, well, obviously he asked me to do a sports column when there was a vacancy and, and I, my sports writing and career involved becoming in documentaries, covering the gay games. Uh, it was, it was amazing to be able to vent that while I was working. He said, you're working on that wrestling novel. So why don't you do a sports column? And uh, it all was uh. very fruitful to be able to cover so much of the sports community in, in multiple ways from the satires to the serious journalistic, to be able to interview Mayoran rugby players in Sydney, Australia. That was, because <laughs> of Mike, you know, I mean, I went on my own, but because he inspired me to continue in doing that kind of thing. Um, and I'll just, here's my favorite photo of me with him uh. in, yeah. The, Wonderful. Lower New York City, uh, about a year before he died, um, I visited after 9-11 to visit my sister-in-law. Um, I remember you'd ask him for a word count. He would be, uh, use as much as you need to tell the story, but no more. <laughs> right, right. I say 800 to 900 words, but yeah. Um, and then my controversial AIDS writers series started. Again, he inspired that. He said, why don't you do a series about the AIDS riots? Because I hate Dan Pallotta. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. That's not a journalistically objective. Um, and, and back to murders, the bizarre dog mauling case took off. Oh, started yeah. With, uh, yeah. Ed Walsh really did extensive coverage. Yeah. Here's Marjorie Noller. And uh, here's the very photogenic prosecutor, James Hammer. Um, that went on. Well, there was a lot of coverage because the trial just went on and on and on. And then yeah. Gwen Arujo, Gwen Arujo was murdered. Um, yeah. Lots of lots of coverage of that of her. Oh, you know what? I want to point something out here. I'm realizing. Mm -hmm. Notice the tagline: "Serving the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender communities." Hello. I I uh, that was that was something I did and did not tell anybody because right. I got so annoyed at it being like. Originally, when the redesign happened, it was like serving the lesbian gay communities. And Bob Ross was like, after two weeks of that, he finally noticed and was like, gay needs to come first. So, <laughs> <laughs> but then it was like, you know, as the token bisexual and trans person on staff, I was like, we need to add like two more words to this. And I did it, I did it without telling anybody. And I'm glad that it has it has carried on still to this day. Yes. Thank you. Yes. A marvelous contribution. Well done. Well, because we're, we're changing the vocabulary changes the culture and we have to yeah. make vocabulary fit changing culture. But yeah, <laughs> definitely LGBT now. And I, I don't know why, but that's, yeah. So Joe Dignan was doing crime news still and a Ruhu case was continuing. Finally guilty plea. But now this was, I just inserted this because Julian's hot, but he was also one of Marcus's favorite friends and leather men. And yes. Uh, he won a title. Julian Mars was, <laughs> yeah. and still is a nice guy, and also hot. Um, uh, good. Sisters, rumors, aid services. Again, a lovely cover. And Carol Channing in the jump. We're not going to go to um, making use of minimal colors. Mike Schur, the late Mark Schur, did a bar series that was in Bar Tab, and here's a feature about the bar, the gangway, which lasted quite a while, like almost ninety years, I'm told. Oh, wow. I went like two weeks before it closed. I thank God. Oh yeah, did you get a piece yeah. of the boat? <laughs> no, I I just always thought it would be there. Yeah, because you know it's cat corner from the magazine bookstore, my favorite bookstore. Oh yeah, and Bob and recently too. We're, we'll talk about that later. I miss him so much. Yeah. Um. Definitely, I always thought it would be there. Oh, I'll drop in. Oh, I'll drop in. And so I've only been in it twice. I've only been in that bar twice, and I just thank God. I just thought enough. Once was for a Christmas party, and once I just think I was hanging out with a friend, and we just walked in there to have a drink. And I'm so happy I went in there. So happy. Well, it only fits like eight people, so <laughs> I was one of the eight. It was a little bigger than that. <laughs> okay. I just love this because Alec Mappa and um, Peter Berlin and the Rainbow. Adrian Adriana was this is one of the Rainbow insertions for the header yeah, letter. Yeah, this this must have been Pride because yes. um, yeah. yeah, we we only ever did well. We only usually got color. You can see from a lot of those earlier issues, it's just you know a bit of spot color with the black and white. But yeah, we started doing full color. Um, and the pride and section was always enormous because we had lots of yeah. corporate ads that popped in and right. then yeah. disappeared for the other 351 <laughs> weeks of the year. Yeah. Not that I'm criticizing. Anyway, 
Um, this is this gets into the whole Les Natali Badlands protests, mm -hmm. liquor license, and alleged racist door policy. There was a lot of coverage of that for a long time. Um, and here's the the shack that cannot be named. I know uh, the dated language, but you know, <laughs> porn and and internet ruined it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, I don't remember if this is a stock photo or we create someone. I created that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Three dimensionality. Yeah. Love yeah. it. A pivotal. Yeah, I, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty damn sure I shot that photo. Really? Yeah. Well, you didn't credit yourself, damn it. No, but, I mean, that's, a, I, yeah, I, because I was just the art director. My credit right. was already in there. Wrote in there. Okay. This is my last sports column. I got to humble brag about being friends with a lot of nice people, including Jeff Getty. Sarah Tuallo, Matthew Cusick, and these lovely Australian lesbian volleyball players who wore feather boas through their tournament. Anyway, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye sports column. Moving on to the Castro's 85th anniversary. God, yeah. we can go to contemporary versions of what's going to happen to it in the future. That's getting a lot of response in our articles. John Farinini and Eric have done articles on the, the fate of the Castro. I think this yeah. was Marcus's 70th birthday. I'm not sure. I just threw it in. He's looking good. He looks really good. He held it together. This is a brighter. This is when we were doing the PDFs on issue.com by 2010. Um, so you can see it looks a little bit better, but there was a shooting, I think, Saturday. And in 2010, Bartab was born. Oh my God, that's a sip. I'm still this really is sip at SF Underground in a previously taken photo. George Lester, the wonderful George Lester, pretty much created the early look for Bartab and Kurt designed, Kurt Thomas designed, I said, make it a make it a beer tab, or he thought it up, I think. He said, we'll call a bar tab and make it look like a beer coaster, a drink coaster. Oh. And he did, and it, history was cool. made. Cool. We tried to rival uh, Gloss, but we didn't really take in enough ads to justify keeping publication. But anyway, that was fun. I wrote the book. I loved it. I had fun doing it. The first, it I wrote the first beautiful. archive column about the toolbox, because that's just the early piece of history. Oh, wow. Love from Life Magazine, God. and then um, several other writers, Jim Stewart, Jack Fisher, and, and Michael Flanagan have succeeded. Here's another George Lester photo that just makes a scene. I said, we want food and we want to go to truck. And he brought two of his cute friends and we did it. It took less than half an hour. And we all got to eat the food. That was an, <laughs> and here's the, the and 45th anniversary of the stud with Michael on the on the right. And I'm sorry, I forget the co-owner's name, the late guy who died. Oh, um, um, Artista. Artista? Oh, that, was an art that was Ben. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, that he was, was at the He was a co-owner co of the stud. Right. Yep. And, and those t-shirts are now collector's items. Yeah. Was obviously taken at our neighbors, the stud, at their bar. And I, I inserted this while humble bragging about Bartab because, Paul, if you're still with us, are you there? I'm here. This was <laughs> an article about the de departure of Michael Smuin from SF Ballet. This is kind of a pivotal piece, right? Wow. Well, uh, I uh, well, I, I, it's, it's actually, uh, I think Smoon was dead by the time that this piece was written. Oh, wow. Uh, um, the, uh, he was gone. Helgi has been here for 37 years now. Yeah, Smoon, uh, Smoon left in, uh, in, in long before then. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I, I had to go back and talk about it. Okay. Uh, and the, the fact is that Smoon's aesthetic had a following and the company has persisted with other people still working in it and our right. an audience. Right. They I just love that image and it, it's I a lot of Yeah. That, that, that gentleman is getting some serious air and uh, some serious is. extension. I used to be able to do that. Now I can barely walk out the room. It's, I used to be able to do that. I used to be able to do that. Another, oh, that's my favorite bar tab cover. Hello. Thank you. Here's Vincent. In the back of uh, of a of one of the Castro Street wine bars, in a lovely setup that cost us a lot of money. Oh, really? <laughs> George Lester shot the photo. Matthew, the late Matthew Simmons, aka Peggy Legs, hand yeah. sewed the uh, the uh, lower furry costume for Vincent. And yes, uh, <laughs> a good time was had by all because that's real wine, and we were drinking it anyway. I got to interview Caswell. Oh, look at your boy, Caswell. By 2013, the bar tab had switched to a, a third section of the print newspaper. The magazine was scuttled to save money, and I got to do editorial 
once a week. And here's Rick Gerhardt. To clarify, the photo of 8 to 25 was taken by me on oh. May 26, 2006. Oh. On Jeff kitchen table. Those were his HIV oh. medications. Oh, you know what I God. think that I, you know where the confusion is with the memory? I'm pretty sure that I had the idea and uh, then but Rick shot it. Okay, okay so you are you. I'm sorry, Rick Gerhardt. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't mean to Rick. Why work. haven't you signed on before <laughs> now? We love you. We miss you. Oh. <laughs> You can look for Rick's uh, early uh, panel and with about photographs as well. Uh, again, moving on, uh, a little more self bragging about Lashans mm -hmm. and Peter Hernandez left us. He went to LA, so he didn't write for us that much. But um, always looking. For, and here's I'm sorry, John has dropped out of the panel. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't get him. I can't get him back on. I'm trying. Where is John Carr? He did <laughs> lovely porn reviews that were so poetic and verbose that I love them. And <laughs> everybody. Ah! Everybody's favorite besties winner, Brian, DJ Brian Mayer, that's M-A-I-E-R, Google him. He was so affable, sitting in the best bar, neighborhood bar, um, I think it was 440, and, and I forget what else. Anyway, besties really reached its peak. It had been done a couple years beforehand, um, but this was uh, my favorite year because Brian was so affable, and the photographs that Gooch and, and, and George Lester took were great, and I still have that crown. <laughs> Brian didn't want it. Brian didn't want it, so I took it. Okay, Adriana is correct. So we always yeah. trying to counter the stereotype of it being an old gay white man's paper. Brent Cal Calderwood wrote about this music festival featuring um, the lovely Chris. Oh my God, I can't remember her name now. I'm so embarrassed. Williamson. Chris Williamson. Yes. Dude. Good Before save, baby. Good save. Thank you so much. And of course, leather race. Oh. race uh, Bannon was our leather columnist by this time after Scott Brogan left. And I always love a good flagging leather man. That's always good for optics. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. image, yeah. Occasionally, Mark uh, Abramson, the prolific author who's been a bartender for years, he would do a guest. He's done guest excerpts from his books, which you can look for one in May. Uh, men Behind Bars is just infamously famous and fabulous. You can find several full-length shows on YouTube that Mark and some other friends have uh, posted on YouTube. My favorite serial arsonist murderer, David Diaz, in and out of jail more times than a turnstile. Or anyway, yeah, lots of coverage of his complete. This is why I don't you don't see bar listings for the mix. Uh, you can Google that later. So, <laughs> Oasis opened and and Heclina changed T Shack to Mother. At the same time, Michael Flanagan did a history piece on the original Oasis when it had a pool. I'm particularly proud of this because it's both historic. It's fresh of what happened that week and also what happened 30 years beforehand. Okay. Oh, cookie dough. Cookie oh, dough is so, so far our only posthumous Bestie Award winner. She oh, died wow. just before when was nominated and everyone was so overwhelmed with grief that they uh, they voted for Cookie Dough. And of course, Michael Chu, DJ Michael Chu, his surviving partner, um, still DJs around the Bay Area. But yeah, that was a real loss because Cookie Dough was doing lots of shows. Another throwback to the bars is Michael Flanagan's piece on the ginger. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, we, I just love these barcode stories because it's what the paper is about, but also yeah. it's a reference because, Tom, did you go to Ginger's in the old days? or? Yeah, a little, not a lot. This was a popular item that uh, Sweet Lips would write about Ginger's a lot. Did she work there? <laughs> she might was, have. Was she on the planks as she used to write? I hung out more at Sutter's Mill because that was the oh, okay. coat and tie crowd. Oh, okay. Cla the classier joint. <laughs> well, Libs didn't actually write that. Patrick Hochtel wrote that that whole column. <laughs> well, he wrote most of it. He would do a phone. He would do a phoner with Sweet Lips, and by the time it was handed inherited by me, Corey Ellison was really writing the whole thing while Sweet Lips was in in hospice. Anyway, abruptly moving on. These are all photos by Kabor. Well, I have to add something to that. Because Go ahead. Yes, we're toward the on. end, Patrick took liberties with the oh. column. <laughs> and he would, he would sneak in little references to French literature. And <laughs> <laughs> he was paraphrasing Proust. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Patty Hoftel rewrote the entire thing because it, otherwise you couldn't, it, it would just be gibberish. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. And Lips always said, thanks for making me look so smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you, know, you know, cheers here to Patrick Hochtel, who's not 
it wasn't invited to this. Little no, thing. I invited him weeks ago, and he never got back to me. So mm. okay, all right, well, whatever. But Patty was a large oh, part of the Sweet Lips thing. Quite. He he had a voice. He definitely had one. And back to visuals. This is the famous Mr. David Glamamore fashion show at the uh, De Young Museum. And I used a herd of photos, as you can see, by Shot in the City, a.k.a. Kabor Banugli, a lovely fellow. And it was amazing. It, I'm so glad I went. I almost didn't go. There were like 350 costumes, 30 different celebrities in nightlife and fashion. And it, it was the event of the season, I, as far as I'm concerned. It's stunning. Brought Sorry. the house down. I, I think there's a video somewhere, but I haven't seen one yet. But anyway, thank you, Corey. There's just some fulsome some fun. Um, and abrupt segue. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> interviewed a gay serial killer. This fascinates me. Cynthia, you can comment on it. How often your freelancers or staff editors went to prisons to interview murderers? It doesn't happen very often. Um, this guy had reached out to Matthew while his attorney... A, a state public defender did. This guy's on death row at San Quentin. Wow. Um, and he wanted to relitigate the whole case, which we did not do. But um, it was kind of interesting. Ed Walsh has also done a number of jailhouse interviews over the years. Yeah, yeah. If it bleeds, it leads. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't bleeding, but it's big and red. One of my favorite layouts. I was so glad that Jack Veger sent me this per photo personally for Cornelius' interview with the famous ginger porn actor performing yeah. at the sadly now closed Nobel Theater. I love it. He was one of, he's one of the smart ones, right, Cornelius? Oh, he was a doll. He's he very doll. smart. <laughs> yes, he was a I doll. I do, I follow him on Twitter. He's a smart guy. Another sad, sad murder. At least yeah. the uh, suspect was ID'd yeah. and eventually arrested. Anthony Bubbles Torres was uh, murdered in 2018. Yeah. And the Knob Hill was murdered in 2018 as well. It died a, a big death. There were the, a major feature porn film was made. Again, another leather spread that I'm really proud Which of. Which I, I was invited to and I did not go. I could not bear the pain. Could you not kick yourself or not? I know, me no, too. No, 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 I, I don't I, want to be in another porn video. Wait. Uh, <clears throat> I would have broke down crying. I would have broke down crying. I, it was that romantic. I mean, yeah. where else can you go to see beautiful men Performances have sex with beautiful men, see beautiful films, bond with people that you never met before, take wonderful photographs. I mean, it was everything except Yul Brenner. <laughs> well, getting to know you certainly is the appropriate song for that. My experience is there. Um, it, abrupt segue what, to Justin. This if, cover, who made this what? cover with, with, with this woman with the. the Which one? That? Is this the outspread arms? Is it, it yeah? Is Adrian? Is it? No, his? this is not me. This um, is Max. This is this is way too. This is way too recent. We're up to 2019, and this is yeah. Max Leger, who was mostly the designer for the arts and nightlife section. And um, that's my article. Well, I, mean, I thought it was Adriana, but whoever did that, it was great. Well, I chose the photos because of the arms, and I love Mark Morris, so I interviewed him. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, and of course, Justin Vivian Bond was a columnist in the 90s for the BAR, so we love her for we, oh, we love yeah. for many reasons, not just we, not just for being brilliant. And, for, and again, this is a weird-ass nightlife cover, but I just love the hole in the wall compared to the Fick Fox's yes. exterior. And uh, these are actually shot 20, 30 years apart in the same corner. Movies. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Completely I, coincidental, not, you know, it was my choosing. I, I hunted down a photo that fit for that year's Folsom and then a historical piece about Phoebe's, which was on the same corner where that, you can see the building in both photos. Uh, <laughs> interesting <laughs> note about the gentleman on the top. Oh, yes, Paul. He, yeah, Paul, Paul yeah. Williams. Paul Williams is also the name of one of the original Temptations. And he also wrote, wrote the, the Paul Williams, the composer. <laughs> He, he wrote, he wrote the Rainbow Connection, so it's all connected. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting a bit giddy. This is too much fun. Back to serial killers. Okay, no, this, <laughs> this is a murder. Cynthia, you wrote this about Michael William Mad Magidson. Yeah, this is an update on the Gwen Araujo case. He was the, I think he's the last guy who's still in jail, and they denied parole for him. Good. Good. That was a huge case. Uh, I was hearing about it even in New Orleans. Yeah. It was huge. And uh, you know, Gwen is named after Gwen Stefani. Right, right. And mm -hmm. so very, very tragic case. I think I created a photograph around uh, 
the death of Gwen. I'll have to dig that up one of these days. But it was okay. a tragic story. Yeah. And speaking of tragedy, this is amazing cover, Cynthia. SF shuts down. This is when the pandemic really hit. March 2020. Yep. Yep. It seems like 100 years ago, I but know. it's only two, almost to the, to the week. Um, yeah. And we did, um, we, uh, these are all PDFs, and we did the paper, went mobile. We really, Michael, you should be applauded for all the things you did to keep the paper going. Yes, yes. We uh, expanded web content coverage, and here's um, Heather Cassell's. Again, she's in the crime panel. You have to watch because this photo, the way she got this photo, and her coverage of international issues in, is pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. That is, yes, that is. It's just a stunning image to me. It's, it's a just, stunning image. Stunning. Just, wow. um, race covered 50 years of leather for our 50th anniversary, or was it? 50th anniversary of IML, I forget, I think so. But Race Bannon was a prolific and, and also very, very well-spoken columnist, the perfect substitute replacement for Scott and Marcus. I just love this because I love Winnie Moore and we love uh, Udo Kier. Yes. And I love oh, Swan Song. Uh, that I would love that film because it takes place in Sandusky, Ohio. Um, this, uh, trying to exemplify the, our, our proliferation of online only coverage. So we did a lot of online stuff before it got to print or sometimes didn't have room for it another uh, global world news report by Heather. And Cynthia, you're writing about the landmark status for the Eagle. Another Stunning lovely image. photo by Rick Gerharder. Thank you, Rick. Stunning, Stunning yeah. image. Stunning. Get perspective. Yep. Um, humble brag about this is our fall arts issue. We crammed in a whole bunch of stuff. Thanks to our advertisers about theater. Jim Gladstone, our th current theater critic. And below that, El Walsh, the uh, Jim, Jim, is is what? is Rick what? still what? working? Is Rick still working for the BAR? Yes. Yeah, most for Cynthia. Yes. Oh, that's that's incredible. That's great. Thank you. Uh, speaking of photographers, uh, for a while before the shutdown, Stephen Underhill was regularly doing nightlife and arts events and benefits. And as people were getting used to outdoor parklets, Harvey's reopened, and Stephen shot an album. I share mostly on our social media because I don't have room in print, but we mostly share on the Bar Tab Facebook page. And then again, oops, we made a, oops, we did it again. The bars abruptly closed as as a, oh, I wrote that. No, that's John Farinini's byline. Yeah, I recommended the photo. That's all by Gooch. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, we had to close things down abruptly after opening, and everything got confusing. Yep. Yep. So more arts coverage when people were allowed to go back into the theater, but below the foliage you'll see podcasts. I suddenly started adding them because people like to stay at home as well. Um, Paul, here's a lovely piece you wrote on the San Francisco Ballet. Thank you, sir. Including the nice editing. Thank you. And uh, well, it seemed beguiling because they did a, a ballet version of, of, of the Graduate, sort of called Mrs. Robinson, right? Uh, they most certainly did. Yeah, they and most certainly did. And the lady who's hanging over is Mrs. Robinson. Right. Oh, right. Cool. Fascinating stuff. And here is she this week's fun. paper. This week's, yeah. Yeah, this week's. We cover the news section. Pride groups grapple with police in parades, something we'll be arguing about and debating for quite a while. Oh, we don't need to see you that close up. Okay, so there's nine of us here. Thank you for enduring the slideshow. I just love putting those together, but we don't always get a chance to share. Um, and again, John dropped out and Will Snyder dropped out. I'm sorry. It looks like Tom has had enough of us as well. <laughs> people keep people keep coming and going so quickly here. I'm paraphrasing. Um, you don't have any scandalous, gossipy stories to share from your days at the BAR. I can hear oh, them. Oh, only the okay. I have two things. I have one of our Christmas parties at. Um, Oh, I can't remember the name of the restaurant. It was not Ivy's. It was after we moved on from there. And Bob Ross oh. got so mad that they served the baked potato in foil that he threw it across the room. <laughs> and Carol Migdon was there at our table. And then the other thing is that Bob did not like the LGBT community center. And I put it on the cover of our pride section one year and he actually made me cry. Aww. So those are my two, two takeaways about Bob and the paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Chris, can I tell the story about the time that I actually tried, had to hand deliver copy to you because we couldn't use the fax machine? 
I had to drive over from Berkeley because Big Missy owned the fax machine and nobody else could use it when Big Missy was in the office. Do you remember that? That, that might have been the time that you actually brought two paragraphs to me that, and, and then we had to have this long conversation about everything that came after it. <laughs> wow. I'm a rather I was, I, was, I was a pretty temperamental writer. I apologize. <laughs> I'm a very merciless editor. <laughs> We've all mellowed, I hope, in our old age. All is forgiven. Not yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Harder has a comment. Remember when Mark Leno photobombed the annual holiday beat? When did he yes. not? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that was like an annual yeah. like that, occurrence. Was that there. was a more recent. Yes, I remember that. Love him though. I, I can remember him. some experiences at the BAR that were really <laughs> inappropriate. That that if we had HR, they would become problematic. <laughs> it was a different time. <laughs> it was a different, different time. time. It was. It was a very different time. But there was there was a there was a um, Michael Michael Yamashita was there. I'm sure. <laughs> At Ivy's, when I was extremely drunk, and they had to call, they had to call Erin Blackwell away from the bar because she was drinking too much champagne. <laughs> oh my God. How can you do that? Yeah, they were always buck. The, the oh, celebration oh, starting classy you know, and all. When you know Bob was funny that way, he would just say, "Step away from the bar, please, Erin." <laughs> <laughs> Or, oh, there was one year when, when Dennis was there and, and, and Bob just said, shut up, Dennis. And he, and the entire room shut down. Oh, my God. It was just like, and Bob would like scream at people. It was like unbelievable. Yeah. I'm, Michael, I'm sure you remember this. I don't know how I escaped it. He was, yeah, always, super duper, he was always super nice to me. He was and afraid he, of you. He did call me toots. But other than that, I mean, which to me I just thought was like gloriously old school, you know, at a different time. Hey, but, yeah, he thought you were a lady, I guess. Hey, just... how you doing, Toots? <laughs> well, Adriana, do you remember that guy that worked there with the red hair? What was his name? Oh, he was why I quit. We got into a fight over my March on Washington spread, and I wanted more photos, and I wanted to cut text, and he said it's done. Yeah. Who's talking? Who's talking? I can't Jim, see. It's Jim. Yeah. I'm talking about the red-headed oh, 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 okay, yeah. layout guy. And we got in such an argument that I quit in the huff for two years before freelance coming back as a freelancer. Yeah. And he well, came to my house, allegedly, and turned over the ha the potted plants. And my, he knew more my address for some, some reason. Oh, wow. And, and yeah, he, quit. He, he was the person I replaced. Yes. Yeah, he yeah. quit in a fury like a Tasmanian devil. He just yeah. whirled himself yeah. into a circle. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I shouldn't, I don't name names because I can't remember. Mike does. Don't name names. We'll be sued. But <laughs> I, know his, I can't remember his name. He was just this big red blob. He had red hair and he was from Michigan and he was horrible. He was very, he had anger issues. Let's be yeah. Yes. I got well. to fight with Bob about a fluorescent light because I had to work in the hallway for two years in the clammy, drafty hallway with Marcus by the copy machine until oh, I got to yeah. go upstairs. And I said, I'm getting a headache from this flashing fluorescent light. And he said, ah, and then like two weeks later, there's an incandescent light, you know, it, it was changed. So, you know, I'm, he, I'm, 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 I can hear Bob now just saying, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was great to work next to Marcus because he always had gossip. He always yeah. had gossip and, you know, he would like, and his, his columns were almost letter perfect until the latter months when he tried to write it. But, you know, he sent it in on time. It was all that military training. Well, you know? wait a minute. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Patrick, look, I'm going to go back. Patrick Hochdell wrote all of those columns for Marcus and for No, him. no, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I disagree. I got Marcus's columns for about three years when I was assistant arts editor. Yeah. And he emailed me he brought the photos he had them scanned he was yeah. he was well prepared and this is when patrick had left so maybe he did it during patrick did it during his his uh time but i was editing marcus and it was like oh one comma you know and he always handed it in right on time so one comma really there was very little corrections to be made. <laughs> I think Patrick and Jim had different standards for what the leather column should be. I well, think. you can look them up online on archive.org, Bay Area Reporter. There you uh, go. I, I'm sorry. I'm go back three decades because I might have dementia, so forgive me. Oh, go ahead. Uh, what I will say is um, 
I can, you know, you know the work I did. I can come up with a lot of scandalous moments, but one of the moments that stood out to me working with you all is I went to the company Christmas party and Jim, you introduced me to the two gentlemen that were the publishers and editor in chiefs of Drama Magazine. Oh, yes. and I had a wonderful, wonderful conversation with them because Jack that Fisher. magazine, yeah, they they formed my eye as far as how to photograph men, particularly men in fetish, mm -hmm. because to me, leather fetish is like haute couture. It's just a masculine version of it. Yeah. What's up, Carl? I see you, baby. Oh, I'm, back. I'm so sorry. We I couldn't find you. I kept undoing people and trying to log you back in. My computer was having hysterics for the longest time. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry about that. But in, you introducing me to the two gentlemen from Drummer, that meant a lot to me. I've been reading that magazine forever and ever and ever. Yeah. And to hug them and to kiss them and to uh, have them flirt with me. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. It was very beautiful. It, what I want to say about the paper is you all are so very romantic to me. As someone who is not from San Francisco, who has decided to make San Francisco my home, to meet you all, even some of you that I've never met before, you all are so very special and I really appreciate the hard work. And thank God you. bless you all. God thank bless you. you. Well, thank that you. sounds like a great way to wrap it up. Um, we are a little over time, but it doesn't matter. Sorry you got logged out, uh, John, um, but- We'll make it up to you, darling. Well, if you want more John Carr, and you should, check yeah. out the adult well, panel with Cornelius and also the arts panel, because John, you were the first arts editor, really, officially, of the paper. It was, yes. And he told us that story in a previous episode. So um, I think it's everyone- It's a great story. It it's is a great really story. Great. You'll have to go back to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page at the BAR to, to share it all. I'm sorry, apologies to get, uh, to um, uh, uh, the others who did not get in. Um, I'm sorry, I'm still trying to work out all these kinks of technology, but Will Snyder did not was not able to join our chat, but we appreciate his contribution. Um, thank you, Cynthia, Cornelius, Adriana, Paul, Mark, Liz, Michael, Christopher, Carr, and uh, Tom in absentia, he left us. Thanks for participating and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bay Area Reporter SF. Thank you so much, everyone. Our support Bay yeah. Media. Oh, it's great support to see you. Bay Media. Yes. Love you all. Mark, it's great to see you. Bye. Bye.